There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. Let's go. Ooh, Ritual Beast. Now we know that Ritual Beast K. Rowe is already up a dual win. Let's get going. Turn one, Elder into Canahawk. I cannot believe he opened up that combo. That is the best combo for Ritual Beast opening up that Elder. Grabbing an ambush. A lot of people do not play ambush. I've been liking ambush myself. Ulti Hawk gets searching. The big question here, is he going to make a return play? Looks like he is not. He's just going to set that ambush double set back to Popega Tom. Cosmic Cyclone taking out that Ritual Beast Ambush, which is what happens more often than actually activating it. Kanadia in Ritual Beast. You what mate flip down the Samoon, negating the search of Black Whirlwind. Activates the effect of Black Whirlwind, the summon of Zephros. Get searching. Going to summon Winda and a Napelio onto the fields. Zephros returned the field spell. Apelio banished to boost the field by plus 500. Activates the field spell to draw a card. Takes out the Apelio. Burns for 300 in the end phase. Petalfin banish a ritual beast to return the extra deck pixie. Now Petalfin can be summoned again, which is what he's planning on doing right now as he summons Petalfin and Winda onto the field. Now that Winda can only be special summoned once, so he's going to need another Tamer, which is the Laura and the Elder. So he's got the Hawk and the Tamer, two other Tamers in the Hawk, so the Hawk will be resummoned. Elder's gonna be summoned. So the only banished Ritual Beast that can be special summoned right now is going to be the Laura. He needs another Spiritual Beast. Banishing a Winda, which has already been summoned, so that is his final fusion. Get swing and take out the Zephyros. 500 life left. We'll be burning for 400 in the end phase. Gonna burn for even more. Burn for 1,000 in the end phase due to the Black Whirlwind. Samoon searching for an Roshi. Special summon or normal summon a Bora. Triggering the Black Whirlwind to get searching for a Gale. Can Tom Papega win this turn? Or will he burn out from his own Black Whirlwind? Special summons a Gale. Gale and the Bora will synchro into a level 7. This is, I believe, the final turn for Tom due to Shadow Game and his own Black Whirlwind. This is it. Let's go. Now that Ultipelio could dodge the Rykiri destruction, Rykiri will attempt to destroy the Ultipelio, but Apelio could summon double window onto the field, double protection. He gave up another fusion last turn to ensure that he could have a double window summon. Very nice. Both windows when destroyed will summon a Ritual Beast from the extra deck or main deck. Special summoning the Oroshi. Oroshi, when sent to the graveyard, will flip the Winda into attack position, but he's not going to be able to deal 3,300 3, damage, or will he? Jonesy, new top tier decks is not clickbait. We watched Evil Eye. If you want me to go out of my way to just spectate the new top tier decks, I could do so. Thank you, Jonesy. What is that? You have a GL, GLHF badge? What is that? Good luck, have fun badge? How do you get that? 4,600 attack. Gale with the reduce. I take that back. Tom Papega actually has more than 3,300 damage in a single attack. I cannot believe it. Tom Papega wins it because Cairo did not summon an ulti pedal fin. Ulti pedal fin could have absorbed the destruction effect of the Rakiri. He got a bit greedy with the ulti Pelio. Because he summoned ulti Pelio instead of ulti pedal fin, he was forced to defusion, which allowed Tom to put his monster in attack position to then attack over for lethal. Oh my Jesus. Scamp MC, 24 months, two years ascended. Thank you, Scamp MC. Anko 90, hey, Decade, which is your favorite tier zero deck in the whole history of Yu-Gi-Oh? Dragon Ruler. Yeah. What's DMCA mean? So this is the whole DMCA thing. A very large corporation owns the right to a song. The 
artist has no say in this. And when you play their song on anything, they get to claim all of your revenue or strike down whatever you are doing that's playing their song. Now, this was supposed to be for big corporations versus big corporations. If you see a late night TV show playing a song from the Beatles to introduce a guest on the show, they're playing, they're giving them hundreds of thousands of dollars for the rights to play that song. Because if they're playing the song without the rights to it, then they strike them down. They get to sue them. But then, you know, Twitch streaming and YouTube streaming, we now have the reach of view, getting millions and millions of views and playing their songs without giving them royalties or paying for the rights because it's too expensive to buy their songs. So they're abusing that to strike us down. And I say abusing it because when I play music uh, through us casting and talking, it's not really replacing the song. It's not going to deter you from buying the song yourself unless you are hearing it so much on my stream that you're so sick of the song, you don't ever want to hear it again. That could potentially be a good case for why DMCA has good use. But otherwise, it's just a way to bully content creators. Not Q. I do think it's free advertisement. There's gonna be a future, about five, five years maybe, where instead of striking us down, they're gonna pay me to play their song. They will. You're running out of time. <laughs> you are running out of time. He's going in. He is so afraid of Destiny Draw. He swings in onto that invoker. Gonna be piercing. Ooh, he's going in, boosting, dealing 2300 damage. This is the lethal attack with Mole Hugh. He is going for it, going all the way. Is this it? Lethal! No! What happened? You were the chosen one! Forbidden Memories, you are officially in the playoffs. You are going to play for $6,650. That's going to be played over the next three to four weeks. Forbidden Memories, congratulations. You are on your way to win the money. Jon Snow at the bottom, Sorton at the top. Let's get dueling. Going to open up with Squire. Squire summon a tuner from the deck. Going to make a turn one Shogun Saga, not a Sun Saga. Going to banish the Squire to draw a card, discard a card, pass back to Soraton. Zip Pfeiffer, thank you for the tier one sub. Elder into Canna Hawk. Lancia to negate the Hawk and negate Fusion Summoning. He could not summon for the rest of the turn. Oh my cheese, after Herald of the Abyss, sending the Shogun Saga to the graveyard. Squire going to summon a Tuner from the deck. Get swinging. Sphere Kribo on the second attack, protecting the Canna Hawk. At least a squad going to take off the Canna Hawk before he banishes a Ritual Beast. Spectral Sword in the Grave going to banish the Solitaire to make a Hades. That's going to trigger the effect of the Solitaire to summon the Spectral Sword on the field. With Hades on the field, Hades will negate the Winda from activating to summon a monster from the deck or the extra deck. Hades is a hard, hard counter to Ritual Beast. Very well. I summon a monster in attack position. Sakura, again, going first. This is a turn one deck. You want to go first with Dark Magician. This is unfair. Going to follow up with Illusion Magic, trimming off the rod to grab up to two Dark Magicians from the deck. Where is the Dark Magical Circle? That is an ideal opening if you have the circle. No circle in sight. Setting his hand. This gives Kurosake a chance. Despite not going first with a turn one deck, there's no circle in sight. But he's got a circle of his own. Only once per turn can you activate a circle. It successfully goes through grabbing a navigation. Following up with a dark magic curtain, turning a turn one deck into a turn two deck. Come forth, dark magician, but wait. Cosmic Cyclone will now banish off the circle. He had the opportunity to negate the circle. He is only now going to banish the circle to prevent it from banishing his own cards. Come forth, Dark Magician. Seal the tomb so neither player can banish cards in the graveyard, which will negate navigation next turn from banishing and negating his back row cards. Let's go. 
Dark magic attack! Flips up navigation. He might not have a circle, but he's got a dark magician summon from the hand and a dark spell caster from the deck. I special summon a monster. $6,600 on the line. This is to qualify for the playoffs. Dark magic expanded within the damage step. Dark magic expanded versus dark magic expanded, boosting up both dark magicians to 3,500 attack. This is a suicide. Both of them take each other out. This is it. Let's go. Rips into a set card. Attack it for 2,500. He can activate his back row card without it being negated. That's it! Just like that, Sakura knocks out Kurosake after eliminating the rest of his clan. BZ is officially qualified for the $6,650 playoffs. BZ has done it. Sakura has avenged his clan. Let's go. Kurosake, you're the chosen one. What happened? 17 Black Wings, 15 Shurinui, 14 Kristrons. I believe Kristrons are afraid of Witchcrafter. That's why their playability went down a bit, but then no one's playing Witchcrafter in today's event. So you should have brought more Kristrons and not be so fearful of Witchcrafter. I feel Witchcrafter is afraid of Black Wings, and that's why there's more Black Wings. So the effect of Witchcrafter on the tournament without even being in the tournament, just existing in the game, increased the Black Wings and decreased the Kristrons. Isn't that interesting? Having an influence on the meta without even being played. Only one evil eye, Rob played it. He did well with it. We watched him win. Then, unfortunately, he did have a draw with the deck, which made him lose in game three due to that draw.